Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's Sean from Ride Sharing 101. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and please hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post a new, a new video to the vlog. And uh, also check out the Facebook group, please. Ride Sharing 101, all one word. So go ahead and sign up and I'll, I'll preview and you can start posting right away. And today's video, um, on the vlog, I want to talk to you about Uber and their cost cutting. And it's pretty funny. The, um, the uh, Washington Post, I think, has set Uber in their sights because today is, or yesterday, I think marked three articles in a row that they were writing about Uber. And, and basically, Uber has been forced to cut down on their, their coffee. And they're only serving Starbucks coffee now which I find hilarious. I, I guess they were drinking some brew called Stumptown before. And there's a show on TV on ABC called Stumptown. And I didn't know that was another name for Portland, Oregon. And I have family in Portland, Oregon that I visit, and I've never heard it called Stumptown. But evidently, Portland, Oregon is called Stumptown. There's a brew of coffee called Stumptown, and that's what they were drinking at Uber, but it was too expensive, so now they're reduced to just drinking poor old Star Starbucks, <laughs> which I guess is a premium blend. I. I work uh, for Wreck and Park in San Francisco, and I get coffee, and I um, I brought some Starbucks, and it's uh, not exactly cheap, but uh, when you're operating chainsaws and hedgers, things that can chop off appendages, you really want to be awake at you know 5:30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So we uh, we load up on the uh, the jet fuel, so to speak, and I I just have to laugh because Uber's been around. I've been driving for over five years and I think they've been around for about seven years. And Uber should have been past this stage a long time ago. I remember the whole dot com business in the late to mid, or the mid to late nineties. And you hear stories about all these startups getting tons of money and they're spending, you know, $5,000 on these, you know, super duper high powered ergonomic chairs and stand-up desks and all this other stuff that's just kind of laughable. And, you know, Uber, Uber's had to lay off 800 people, I think, in the last week or two. And there was a story a little while ago where they would have these Uberversaries. And what they would do is they would give people these Mylar balloons. And Uber was spending like $200,000 on these balloons just for people's anniversaries. Now, if you're making money hand over fist, if you're making profit hand over fist, then okay, you can kind of get away with things like that because it's a business deduction and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But they're not making a profit. Now they just give out stickers, which is what they probably should have been doing in the first place. You don't buy super expensive coffee. You don't have, you know, spend $200,000 in these Mylar balloons. Um, this is just basic business and it it just makes me wonder has anybody there worked at another company before it's it is telling that i think they didn't have a um uh, chief financial officer for like a couple of years and and maybe you know this explains a lot but companies that are trying to make a profit do not do these things companies that have been around for seven plus years do not make these kind of mistakes and i still have to shake my head like really one they're downgrading their coffee and this is news somebody is very disgruntled the article also mentions that morale is really bad well, it must be if people are complaining about the coffee. I mean, I, I could see why they would complain because they're just ignorant and they don't know better. And a lot of companies don't even have coffee. So, you know, hey, feel fortunate that you have something there to drink. I work at Rick and Park and we have to bring our own coffee in. And we pay for it. So, hey, Uber, you're not paying for coffee. So be thankful for what you got, okay? This, this mindset just just boggles me. This is not something that a seven-year-old company should be dealing with. This should have been streamlined a long time ago. And the fact that it hasn't really should make you panic. 
I believe the IPO was back in May. And what a lot of people don't realize is there's a six month lockup before employees can sell their shares after there's been an IPO. Today is October 1st. So uh, I believe come November, that's when people can start selling their shares. So at least a month, I'm not sure when in May, but you have, we'll say four to eight weeks is the lag period. Now, Uber stock has tanked. What do you think is gonna happen when all the employees sell their shares? Now, some people said, oh, well, people aren't gonna sell their shares when it's, you know, when it's this low. But hey, read the writing on the wall. Half of something is a lot better than all of nothing. You know, to think about that. Uber is losing more money now per quarter than it was last year. There are more people, there are more competitors in the market. Most people just know Uber and Lyft. Well, Trip is, you know, threatening to start their little rideshare up in Florida. Um, however you feel about them, whether they'll be the, you know, the next contender or if they're just a pretender. There's um, Gyro here in the San Francisco area that's doing beta testing. You have companies like Rideshare Austin. Uh, there's another company that escapes my, um, whose name escapes me, but they just do um, Napa Valley wine tours. They're Rideshare for the, the Napa Valley. And there are specialized ones for, for children. And there's all kinds of things going on. And for too long, Uber has had the business model of it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. But they did that for too long. They angered too many people. And now all the lawsuits are coming due. The one for California and Massachusetts drivers has settled. The payout, millions of dollars are being paid out, have been paid out, are still being paid out. The checks are still, you know, in the mail. Haven't gotten mine yet. I know other people who have. So um, new lawsuits are, are cropping up all the time. So Uber's got a lot to be scared about. You know, they may have laid the groundwork so other people can come along and just steamroll them. And I, I can totally see that happening. I can maybe see Uber and Lyft combining to be a distant second or third place down the road once one of these, you know, upstarts comes along. Because their business model is like, hey, we'll just take a small percentage or we'll do uh, a booking fee and take some, you know, in-ride advertising. And, you know, and if that model happens, they'll crush Uber because they'll take Uber and Lyft's best drivers and they'll leave Uber and Lyft, you know, wallowing in their dust. So we'll see what happens, but it's not looking good for Uber, which is sort of a, you know, continual theme for the so-called giants of rideshare. Anyway, this has been Sean from Ridesharing 101. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind and considerate, be careful, and look out for one another. Thank you.